Hello, my name is Dr. Deb Crystal Baker and I'm the Learning Strategies Department Chair and Instructor here at BC. In our last video, we discussed how social and behavioral scientists begin their research papers, but we didn't really talk about why the scientists do the research to begin with. So in today's video, I'm answering the question, why do research? As I mentioned before, the basic parts of a research project include the introduction, the background or purpose information, the research question, the methods used or taken, the findings, some type of discussion, and a conclusion. I'll explain each section in future videos, but in this video, I'm going to focus on the background and purpose section and the research question section. Victoria College's Total Learning Center presents Dr. Deb Explains Why Do Research? Remember from the last video that social and behavioral scientists seek to understand why we do what we do. Therefore, the research process usually starts with some question the researcher has, such as, does high school GPA predict college success? However, before the researcher can begin to study this question to see if high school GPA predicts college success, he or she has to do some background research to see what has already been done on this topic. After all, if someone has already answered this question, there may be no need to conduct a research study. This is why most research papers include a background or purpose section after the introduction. This is where the researcher tells the reader what he or she has found on the topic under discussion. This section usually includes what interests the researcher about this topic, what is known already about the topic, what still needs to be discovered about the topic, and any basic information that the reader needs to know in order to understand the research. The background or purpose section explains why the researcher is doing the research. It often includes a lot of information from other researchers as the researcher explains what has been studied and what hasn't, which is why this research is needed. The research from other researchers is usually noted with an in-text citation like Brent and Cantwell, 2010. This is APA style, the style that most social and behavioral scientists use, and includes the author's last name and the year that the study was published. MLA formatting uses the author's last name and the page number the information is found in. This information is useful for two reasons. First, it tells the reader that this information comes from another source and is not the author's ideas or words. This is important because we must always credit other people's ideas and writings when we use them in our own work. Secondly, it helps the reader find this source if he or she is interested in reading it. The reader can go to the references or works cited page in MLA formatting and find the Brent and Cantwell entry and then look for the text. Let's take a look at how a couple of researchers have provided information in their background section. Ariel and Karpicki's research on improving self-regulated learning with a retrieval practice intervention provides background information on ways in which students use retrieval practice ineffectively, which helps to show why their research is important. Bartolomeo Meda's research on the use of learning journals to foster textbook reading in the community college psychology class doesn't even use an introduction, but jumps right into the background and literature review of what has already been researched on the topic. Another reason for the purpose and background section is that it provides the researcher with an opportunity to define any terms for the reader. This is important because the researcher wants the reader to have the same definitions in mind for the terms being used as the researcher has. For example, Walters and Hussein define first grit and then self-regulated learning in their background and purpose section so that their readers know what the researchers are referring to when they use these two very important terms. In addition to providing background and purpose information on the topic being studied, the researcher also needs to share the research question with the reader. The research question simply states what question or questions a researcher is trying to answer. Thibodeau and others research on first year college students' time use, relations with self-regulation and GPA, includes four research questions which the authors highlight separately and number. They also include an explanation of the research question after stating what it is. 
In contrast, Walters and Hussein's research on investigating grit and its relations with college students' self-regulated learning and academic achievement simply lists the research questions in a short paragraph. While the background and research questions sections of the research aren't the main focus of the paper or research, they are still important. They explain to the reader why the research is being conducted, what interested the authors, what they hope to find that other researchers didn't, or how they are viewing the topic differently than other authors, and exactly what the researchers are asking in the research question. Then, the rest of the paper, which we will explore in future videos, discusses how the research was conducted, what was found or discovered, and what it all means. If you want to know more about the research process, click subscribe and hit the notification bell and stay tuned for more videos as Dr. Deb explains.